Well, Brianna, thank you so much for being here with me on the Entrepreneurial Success Podcast. I am excited to have you here because, yes, we are going to talk about copywriting, which is a big thing and also a big <laughs> block for so many main, for so many people. So um, before we get started, why don't I hand over to you so you can introduce yourself and tell us a sure. little bit about what you do. Well, thank you so much for having me. I am Brie Gunn. I have been a copywriter for 11 years. I started out writing emails for a wedding magazine online and um, went from there, learned how to market, what works in launching, what doesn't, made my clients millions and millions of dollars. And here I am. Oh my gosh. And, and this, is the, this is the interesting thing because you said you've got an amazing story to share. So I'm a little bit curious, to be honest. Yeah. How did you get started? How did you get started with, with so, copywriting? What was the thing that just sparked it for you? It was an accident, actually. Um, I, was, I have a pre-law degree and I was planning to go to law school and then I got pregnant with my son and I realized that I wanted, I wanted to work, but I wanted a more flexible schedule than legal would allow. And so I finished up my degree two weeks before he was born. And I, and as soon as I had him in my arms, I realized I couldn't go back to work. I was like, he's so cute and vulnerable and sweet. And the firm I was working for was very accommodating. They were totally willing to give me my own office, get a crib, like let him, let me bring him with me basically. But the stress of working for a divorce attorney is really, really high. And it was not something that I could, I could justify. So um, I also knew I didn't have a choice about not working because my husband was a student at the time. Yeah. And I was talking to my mom and, you know, lamenting about how I, you know, I, I wanted to stay home, but I didn't know if I could. And she's like, well, there's this article in my Real Simple magazine about this website called Hire My Mom. And, and um, you know, you should look into it. And I was like, that's totally a scam. Like, there's no way this is a real thing. Who has a website called Hire My Mom? And who's actually going to hire a mom? Um, turns out people do, and it's a real website, and it still exists, and it's a great resource for people who are looking to get started in the online space. Um, I still use it to this day when I'm looking for clients. And um, I found a gig working for a wedding company, and all they wanted me to do was check email. And because I had no online experience, they didn't hire me out the gate. They actually hired a firm and then they got put into a queue and their stuff kept getting pushed back because the queue, they weren't working through their content fast enough. And they called me about a month later and said, um, would you be willing to take us on? Do you still have space? And I did. Um, I had taken on a couple other clients in the meantime, but I was, I was like, yeah, I can absolutely check email for you. No big, no big deal. Cause that's, you know, that's an easy thing. And they had a very, very angry vendor who didn't have a right to be angry. He was just a nasty person. And he called um, them every name in the book and it kind of riled my hackles a little bit. So I wrote a response and left it in their inbox. And I got a call and she's like, that was brilliant. Could you write more? And I was like, sure. Um, I don't know if you know this, but I have a blog. And she's like, I didn't know that. Let me go look. And she's like, oh my God, could you also write our blog articles? And could you write our emails? And could you write all this? And I was like, and I said, yes, of course. And I went from working five hours a week to working almost 30 hours a week for them and um, helped them market their programs, help them. I, I, I literally am self-taught. I had to learn Entreport when it was Office Autopilot. And, um, you know, and I, I've never looked back. I worked with them for five years and ended up pricing myself out of the contract, um, which was really scary at the time, but it was a good thing because it allowed me to book higher end clients. And I, I, yeah, that's, that's how I got into it. Oh my goodness. It's so fascinating to hear. And, you know, it's lovely to hear as well from your experience and from something that you just enjoy doing how it kind of started, how it evolved. And, you know, basically yeah. it took you to where you are now. And I think the one, the one thing that I love about your story is, um, you know, you were passionate about something, but there was a certain drive as well for you to keep going and just to have fun with it at the same time. It wasn't really about like, oh my gosh, I've got to make this work. It was just like, let's go for it. Let's have fun with it. Let's just write. So I really like that a part of your story. Yeah, I think that I think that we sometimes forget that our background or our education doesn't necessarily need to inform what we do for a living. 
you know, sometimes there's a natural, I've always been a writer. I, I find like when I, whenever I go home to my mom's house, I, I find notebooks filled with poetry and stories and, and like, it's like this, my bedroom, well, it used to be my bedroom is a never ending plethora of stuff I created when I was younger, you know? And so my mom's always like, do you want this? Should I keep this? And, um, you know, I think that sometimes those gifts that we have, we don't leverage them in a way that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so we end up miserable doing things that we know how to do, but don't necessarily light us up. And when you can align you know, the things that light you up with your talents, then you can create real magic for people. Yeah, exactly. So let's talk a little bit about content writing because yeah. I think, you know, um, when it comes to content writing or copy otherwise known as as well, is a lot of people find it frustrating because the first thing that they say is, well, my content or my copy doesn't convert into clients or customers. So from your point of view, why do you think that is? Nine times out of 10, it's because it's centered around them mm -hmm. and not centered around your client. So we are, as humans, very selfish creatures. We want to know what's in it for me. You're listening to this podcast right now because you're hoping to get some kind of inspiration or tip or tactic that's going to help you. You don't care about my story. Yeah, it's entertaining, kind of. But you're waiting for the tips and tricks that you can leverage in your business. And so are your clients. And if all you're doing is talking about yourself in your emails and your marketing, your social media, all of that, people start to tune it out. It's like, we all had that friend in high school who was the me show, who no matter what the conversation was, they had to steal the spotlight back to them. And they had, to, they were, they're the one uppers, the people who are always like, oh, but I have a better story. Mm -hmm. Oh, but this happened to me. And when you are that person, we, we have evolved to smile and nod, but not actually pay attention. Yeah. And so if you read through your copy and you replace every use of I or my or me with you, us, or we, you are going to be in a far better situation than you are right now. Yes. Oh my gosh. And as you're saying that, it takes me back to the first time when I started writing copy and content for my business. In particular, I remember that there was this one where I had to learn to talk to one particular person and say you. And I was like, but there's so many people that I'm talking to. I should say all of you and, and we and all of those kind of things. But then I realized very quickly that by, again, moving it away from me, talking to one individual and changing it to you, it really started making a difference but it was a hard thing in the beginning and now i'm so used to it i do it all the time but in the beginning it is quite a hard concept in order to get around yeah and it's it's it, we naturally want to talk about ourselves right we feel like that's how we establish our expertise and that's fine but you can establish your expertise and hold a conversation with another person at the same time. And when you learn how to do that and balance it well, mm -hmm. start with your stories, start with the, with the hook. You know, um, one, of, one of my most opened emails is an email where, where the, the actual subject line was that time I put myself in the hospital. And then the preview line is no, really. And it's, I tell the story about when I launched, I helped launch a program that made 1.7 million and I landed myself in the hospital with double pneumonia. <laughs> I do not recommend that you do what I did because it was, I was miserable. I was so sick. And I talk about how it does not have to be it being your marketing, your promotions, your launches. They do not have to be that stressful. They can be, they can be a different type of, um, I have a spider on my desk. They can be a different type of, um, I got him. Um, <laughs> I used to scream and run. I've gotten better. Um, they can be a different type of, um, of entertaining because you can take that story, like the story that I told about starting my business. And I could have spun it in the middle and said, you know, have you ever had an experience like that where you took a job to do one thing and it turned out they needed something completely different. If you have, then you understand the excitement that comes with a pivot. Yeah. And then you go into the story that's about them and you do it very, very discreetly so that you don't really realize you're getting sucked in. But 
when you start to read about you, you start to be excited and you, you feel validated and you, mm. all of those feelings translate into sales. Yes. Yes, it's very true. So do you have a couple of tips that you can give us about what it is that we need to do to change then the copy? So the first thing, like I said before, is to change every instance of I, me, or my to you, we, or us. The second thing is you don't have to tell stories about yourself every single time. Mm -hmm. Leverage your client's stories in a way that is above board. What I mean by that is like, I just had a great call with a, with a well-known speaker and he was struggling with his marketing on LinkedIn. So we talked a little bit about that and, um, and we had, you know, I, we basically walked through his LinkedIn. I told him what to change and he was so blown away by the small changes that could make a really big impact on his business that, he was like gung ho to work with me. Mm -hmm. And all of that happened because I took the time on a discovery call to give him something tangible. So when you're talking to people, whether it's a discovery call, whether it's social media, whether it's an email, whether it's a live, give actionable tips that are going to make a real true, good, true, honest impact on their business in real time that they can see it it creates value and and what ends up happening is people go wow if i got this for free what happens when i pay this person yeah. and that translates in, into really easy sales yeah no it's really good points and i like how you're sharing it as well so when it comes to content creation i mean apart from obviously putting it on blogs a lot of people use content creation as well um, apart from posts which we all do on social media but emails Email marketing is one of the biggest thing. And a lot of people are using yep. it, which is, I think is amazing. But again, mm -hmm. you've got to do email marketing right. And this comes with the content. Now you can have the best content in the world, but let's face it, if people don't open up those emails, they're not going to get the content of what it is that you want to share. So from your experience, what is it that people can do that can help them to have an open rate on their emails? So one of the things you can do is to leverage your preview line. Many people do, but many more do not. And what you can do is in now, there are a few email systems that don't allow you to have a preview line. If you're mm -hmm. in one of those, I would definitely look for an alternative. Some great ones are Drip, Active Campaign, Convert Kit, um, even MailChimp or Mad Mimi have the option to do preview lines. And it is the most read line of your entire email. So your subject can say whatever your subject says. Like I said, like mine was like that time I landed myself in the hospital. And then my preview line was like, no, really. Mm -hmm. You can make it conversational. You can ask a question. You can give statistics. People love numbers. Um, but make sure you leverage that preview line. The second thing you can do is use the client's name in that email at least three times. Oh, interesting. The hello does not count. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so yes, it's polite to say hello, like, hi, Henrietta, like, here's your thing, blah, 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 blah. Or hi, Jane, here's your thing. But you want to be, you want to, every good, solid emails cause you to think and ask questions. Mm -hmm. They give tips and tricks. What you can do is you can say, like, have you ever wondered if XYZ works, Jane? Or, or Jane, I bet you, I bet you've had this experience before. Mm -hmm. And when you use their name, it makes the email feel far more personal, which leads to more conversions. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's so true. But you know what? It's very true because I often just use the name once or twice and once is included in the high. <laughs> yeah. No, that's really interesting. Okay. So. Are there any other tips into how people get that email opened? Or do you find that the, the bulk of it really just lies with that subject, subject in the preview line? The subject in the preview line is, is key. The other thing that you can do, and this requires looking at your statistics, mm -hmm. is take a look at the last 10 to 30 emails that you've sent and look at the open rates and space blah, pay special attention to the ones that have the highest open rates and replicate that feeling, mm. not repeat the subject line, but like, let's say your subject line is, 
Um, I have a client, we sent out an email that says, everyone loves a good before and after, do you? Uh, and it was, everyone loves a good before and after. And the preview was dot, 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 do you? Question mm. mark. We got a 54.97% open rate. That is insane. Yeah. And people loved it. We had a, we had a click through rate of almost 5%. It did really, really well. So now that we know that the before and after works, we can take it and say, remember when I talked about that before and after? And in the preview line, you could say the open rate on that email was 50.4%. Here's how I did it. Mm, that's very good. Does that make sense? It makes sense. It's very good. No, it's interesting. It's things that I haven't thought about. I mean, yes, I look at my analytics from my point of view, um, but I don't leverage those previous emails with great open rates. Yeah, I just I've even I started. <laughs> yeah, I have I have um, a spreadsheet that I use um, for my clients where we put any emails that have over twenty percent conversion rate or open rate on them or click through rate on them. Um, they get put into a like I have a big spreadsheet. It's got all my clients in it, and everyone has their own tab, and it gets put in that spreadsheet so that when we're stuck or stumped, I can go back and look at what worked really really well, and we can pull from there. Yeah. No, that it's really interesting. So I want to move over to one of the other mm -hmm. scary things, because apart from the emails getting open, there's another scary thing that people shy away from. And I've, I get this all the time, and I'm sure you do as well. And this is the conversions. This is the sales, having that conversion from an email, as an example, or from mm -hmm. the content that you've created. So tell us a little bit about why you think sales shouldn't be scary. Well, I believe that selling is helping. I don't believe that selling is yucky or gross or spammy. Mm -hmm. Can it feel that way? Absolutely, depending on the delivery. But at its core, at its base, sales is supposed to be helping. You think about the grocery store advertisements. They're helping you plan your meals. They're helping you plan, and they're not, yeah, they're a little spammy. but it helps you make buying to purchase decisions. As coaches and course creators and content creators, we forget that we need to say, listen, this is the service I provide, or this is the, the program I have, because people are out there looking for what you have. If you don't tell them and you aren't open about your offer, they're gonna go find somebody who is. Yeah. So you need to, and this is, this is a hard pill to swallow for some, but you need to get over yourself. Um, so, so listener, suck it up, start talking about your offer. You don't have to make everything about your offer. I, I typically leverage a 60, 40 mentality when it comes to social media and marketing and email that 60% of the time it needs to be solid quality teaching content or asking questions, engaging all of that. The other 40% of the time you're free to sell. If that makes you uncomfortable, do an 80, 20 split and slowly increase the in number of instances that you offer your program. A great way to offer your program if you're super duper uncomfortable is to leverage the PS in your emails and say something like, PS, did you know there's multiple ways to work with me? Colon, list your programs out. Because the PS is one of the least used spaces in an email, but it is one of the most impactful. And it's also, you can send out an email that's completely full of really great content, really high quality teaching or leverageable information. And then you can PS, by the way, you can work with me here. Mm -hmm. You can do that in your social media. You can put it in a comment versus putting it in the main, on the main stage. You can also um, leverage your sales by just building relationships. If you post a question on social media or a poll, individually reach out and direct message to every single person who responds and thank them. Nothing more than that. Just say thank you. Be human because they're going to remember that. And the next time they're looking for a coach or consultant with your skills, you're going to be top of mind. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love it because, you know, in so many ways, when it comes to the selling part, it is about our own beliefs. It is about our own um, kind of, you know, brick wall that we put up against, you know, in front of ourselves and kind of think like, oh my gosh, now I've got to sell. And yes, we all have our own preconceptions about selling, but mm -hmm. I love what you said, get over yourself in a nice way. <laughs> we all have to go through a phase where we kind of feel that, you know, this is what I'm struggling with, but there's got to come a point, like you said, just for us to kind of work through it. 
Yeah. And then start having those conversations, start yep. talking about it. The more you're going to do it, the more you're going to feel a little bit more at ease. So at the end of the day, you've got to start somewhere, but you've got to be consistent as well no. and do what you mm-hmm. said, do an 80, 20 rule. 80% yeah. of their content is all about teaching, helping. And then the other 20% is about your services, what it is that you're offering. And so yeah. increase that percentage. So no, I love how you put it all together. I think it just makes so much sense. And I hope everybody's taking some great notes from this. <laughs> yeah, and the, the other thing that I think is really key is when you do get on that discovery call, when you do get on that marketing strategy call, whatever you call your discovery call, because honest to goodness, guys, they're all the same freaking thing. Yeah. When you get on whatever that free call or paid strategy session is, lead with value. Mm-hmm. Give Make sure that whoever you're talking to leaves the call with at least three tangible things they can implement in their business right now. Because if you do that, even if they're not ready to buy today, you're going to be top of mind because you were helpful. And if you are not able to help them, this is why you want to grow your referral network and your, and work on networking. You can refer them to, you know, I had a gal who needed, Um, she really didn't need content. She needed, um, someone to build her funnel and I don't build funnels. So I have a little Rolodex. I miss my Rolodex. It made like the noise. Um, (laughs) I have a digital, I use Trello, um, but I can go through and I can look for funnel builders and I can say, you know, I think you and -and so-and-so would really match up really well. Let me refer you. And then when she does need copy, when she does need project management, when she does need something that I do do in my business. Guess who's top of mind because I was helpful. Yes, absolutely. Oh my gosh. I won't even get started on networking because it is so, so powerful. <laughs> it's a huge so topic. It's, it's a huge topic. We can definitely talk separately about that. But no, I think, yeah. you know, when it comes to the copywriting, there's so many elements of what you can do to really put the right content out there to attract people to you. So I feel that that is so important. I call this your attraction Mm -hmm. strategy, but you've got to do it in the right way. So (laughs) for those of you that don't know, Brianna's got her two sons with her. (laughs) My, my children were, (laughs) yes, it's a little bit of chaotic here, but I also think that, you know, I thought about rescheduling, but then I, I also thought about the fact that I know that some of your listeners have kids, younger kids at home. I built my entire business with a baby on my hip and it's not always pretty. It's not always quiet and that's okay. You have to embrace life as it is in the day and, and move with it. So, you know, when I got the call on Monday that I had to come pick up my boys from school because there was a COVID exposure on the bus, Um, I wasn't super thrilled, but you know, I love having them here. They want to be in my space and we've tried allowing them to be in my office and not allowing them to be in my office. And it's better if they're in my office. Um, There's less fighting and less arguing and and (laughs) all of that good stuff. But it also, it's, it's funny how much of my content comes from days like this. Yeah. You know, I like I um, after we finish this podcast, I'm going live to talk about like, what do you do in today's world when both your kids are home because of an exposure? Um, Perfect example right here behind me. (laughs) Right. Like I am literally dealing with this today and I feel, you know, no makeup, had a moment having one of those days. I'm it's been a been a week and it's okay. Yeah, and absolutely. You know, and. I also find it's a really good barometer for the types of clients you want to work with. If you have a dog, if you have kids, if you have cats, if you have roommates, you want to make sure the clients that you sign are willing to deal with the chaos that is your life. Because I've had people be like, oh, you have kids? Ooh. And they're not a good client for me. And that's Mm -hmm. completely fine. And that's why I keep networking and I keep expanding my network. And that's the other reason why sales calls are so effective because you can, you know, you can say, listen, um, my kids are older, but you know, I do have two children. They're home occasionally on holidays. And during the summer, if this is going to be a problem, then we're not a good fit. Mm. Um, and being very, very honest in your communication is key to building relationship. And the thing that's going to make sales easy for you, I'm, I promise I'm bringing this back around to something that that is we're focused on. Um, the key to making sales easy is being 
transparent and honest mm -hmm. with what you have to offer and how you offer it and your current situation. Because even if they're not the right fit at the right time, I've had people come back years, literally years later and say, I'm now ready to work with you. I'm excited to work with you. I've been, I haven't been able to get this out of my head since we talked last. Those relationships are what is going to drive your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And this is, this is, you know, partially why we're keeping it natural. We're keeping it as it is, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and a lot of people, especially with what's happened these days, a lot of people are accustomed to having kids in the background, having the dog, having the cat, like you mm -hmm. said, your cat just comes and sits in front of you sometimes. <laughs> he does. And he thinks he's the most magical thing to ever hit the world. And he wants the world to know how beautiful he is. I know, I know. Well, this is part of the reason why Cooper is sitting on the other side of the door, feeling very sorry for himself this moment because he's not allowed in when I do podcasts. But then, oh, he is such a sweetheart. Oh, bless you! But then afterwards, I let him in. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, come on, get a cuddle in. Um, but you know what? Apart from it, I think you know it just shows a little bit on the natural front of us as being business owners, entrepreneurs, running our own business, mm -hmm. having to deal with family life at the same time. But equally, you know. It's like you said, there's great stories that come from it. You have stories that comes from you with your family. I've got stories that comes from me, you know, spending time with Cooper and my family. And that mm -hmm. again, comes back full circle to the content that you can create stories that you can share. Again, it's not always about you just verifying that, but it gives you stories that you can start sharing and it gives great content that you can create in addition. So keep it natural, keep it authentic, just like you said, and you know, the sales will come eventually it will come yeah. around. And that's the thing about marketing. Any channel of marketing takes time. Yeah. You can't, it's like, it's like losing weight or, or, um, having children or anything worth doing in life or, or adopting a pet. It's not a split second decision for most people. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, when you went and got Cooper, who's her beautiful, beautiful German shepherd, you know, you didn't think at noon, I'm going to get a dog today and go get the dog. You thought about it for a period of time. You did research on dog breeds, oh, you yes. decided what you wanted, and then you went to purchase. And the same is true of hiring an online specialist, a coach, a consultant, a service provider. People don't make split second decisions. So you need to make sure that you are leveraging the time, the decision making time that they need, which typically is around 30 days mm. and making sure that you are being helpful and considerate and in their space in a nice, plentiful way, yeah. but not in an annoying way so that they can go, okay, I'm ready to hire a copywriter or, okay, I'm ready to hire a coach. And then they're like, oh. Bree's in my Bree's in my feed. She's a copywriter. I like her stuff. Let's see if she has space. And it becomes a much more natural conversation yeah. than trying to shove something down somebody's throat. I mean, nobody goes to the park with their kids or their dog and goes, hi, you have a dog and I have a dog. We should be friends. <laughs> That's that. just weird, right? <laughs> nobody does that. Nobody goes to the park and goes, hi, I procreated and so did you. We should be friends. It's like proposing marriage on the first date, which occasionally happens. Um, it happened in my case, um, but I'd also known my husband, um, my, my current husband for almost 15 years before that happened. So it's not, it's not a normal thing. Yeah. You know, there's always going to be those outliers. Um, but yeah, yeah, you have to, you have to treat the client acquisition process just like you would a regular, making a regular friend. They, I, at the end of the day, friends buy from friends. Yeah. So if, if you're on a mission to make more friends, you're in a really good spot because those friends are going to start buying your programs and products. Yeah. And that's it. You've just nailed it on the head. It takes time, people. Everything in life takes time. You've got to have the patience. And that is the hard thing. But oh my gosh, Brianna, I just love this conversation. I think you and I could talk about this forever. And we could oh my talk gosh, about we totally dogs could. and cats. <laughs> yes. So listen, just to conclude with everything, you actually have an amazing magazine that you're running I do. and you've got a copy there with you. Tell us a little bit about the magazine. So I partnered with, um, smart femme who is, um, Leah Woodford is their CEO. She's an amazing, amazing marketer. She, 
um, and she specializes in magazines. And she asked me to come speak at her at her magazine retreat. And I got there and she pulled me aside and she goes, Brie, you're going to do a magazine. And I looked at her and I was like, you have to be smoking crack. And she goes, <laughs> no, I really, you, you're, you need to do a magazine. There's no copywriting magazines out there. I looked. And I was like, okay, I'll do the magazine. And so I did, and it's called Copyright. And Perfect. it is free. Um, it's we've got articles on everything from your number one tip to creating new revenue to cold outreach to three tips to make your copy convert um, to collaboration over competition. Um, it's a great resource for coaches and consultants and even other copywriters. It's not super long. It's 44 pages, I believe. But I've um, I I made sure to feature some really fascinating women. And um, I think that you're going, your audience is going to absolutely love it. And if they want a copy, you can get the digital copy at briannagun.com forward slash magazine. Amazing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That is something to be super proud of. And congratulations. Like you Thank said, you. nobody else has got a copyright magazine. So there you go. No. Well done. You're the first. So for those of you listening, if you want to get a copy um, of this magazine, the link is below in my show notes. And then what I'm also going to do is if you want to connect with Brianna, you're more than welcome to follow her on Instagram. Her website details are there, other social media links. So by all means, go and stalk her and you know just check her out. Get in touch with her, chat with her if you want to learn more about the services that she's offering. Because with all her years of experience, I'm sure that she'll be able to help you without a glitch. And you'll be so and, surprised yeah. even, you know, with the, with the conversions when your copy is done right, you'll be amazed. Trust me when I say this. It makes a big difference. Yeah. Oh my it gosh. It really does. Yeah. I'm, I, I can put my hand up for that because once I got my copyrights, it really made a huge difference to my business. So yeah. think about it. Get in contact with Brianna. She would love to have a chat with you. <laughs> I would. I totally would. And we can geek out over copy or I can help give you some pointers on what you can do to leverage the copy that you currently have on your website and social media to make it more impactful. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. There's so much that you can teach you. Trust me. Brianna, thank you so, so much for coming onto the podcast. This was absolutely brilliant. I hope your two boys are okay and they're feeling better soon. Good luck for the too. rest of the week. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I wish you all of the best and we're going to be in touch fairly soon again. Okay. Awesome. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.